In the midst of the First World War, an African-American regiment was deployed to France. At home, they battled racial segregation. In the trenches, they now fought for a country refusing them basic rights. And while doing so, they also helped bring jazz to Europe. They were known as the Harlem Hellfighters, and their band leader was Lieutenant James Reese Europe. That music, first played a hundred years ago, is now being reinterpreted by composer and pianist Jason Moran, in tribute to a jazz pioneer who's been forgotten. It's frustrating as a, as a musician when someone who's made such a large impact on the music gets wiped away. And James Reese Europe is more than a jazz musician, he's an organizer. And that rarely kind of happened in jazz history after him. Right? Like a, a person who had equal impact on the stage as he did off the stage. A classically trained pianist and violinist, James Reese Europe was a key figure in the New York music scene of the early 20th century. During the war, he enlisted in the 15th New York National Guard Regiment, the first all-black unit. They fought on the Western Front and performed music for Allied troops and civilians. There's a men and bus are coming, look out! There's one more. James Reese Europe used his music to document the terror of the trenches, even composing while he lay in a field hospital recovering from a gas attack. Any soldier that walks into war and hears whizzing bullets, you know, falling bombs, you know, or this, you know, loud rattle that says, put on your gas mask, you know, I mean, this is, when they, when, when, so the sounds become part of how you understand where you are. And James Reese Europe even also took out a small portable organ to the front lines to start writing songs. I haven't met musicians like that. <laughs> it's quite brave. For Jason, performing the music of James Reese Europe is about recognizing and remembering the struggle faced by black Americans at the time. We must see them, right? Because how does war get racialized, right? You know, how do people who have sacrificed everything, sacrifice their families, their love, right, their futures, you know, put it all on the line? And the same goes for the musicians too, right? So how does the music then stand the test of its legacy if you continue to wipe away the African-American presence and struggle in jazz history? Because I know when I hit certain sounds that they aren't mine, right? That those are passed down sounds when I play them. And, um, and that means I'm constructing this, this idea of, of, of what my ensemble sounds like through memory, through cultural memory. James Reese Europe and the Harlem Hellfighters returned to a hero's welcome, parading through Fifth Avenue in New York City. Having fought for their country, they now demanded their rights as American citizens, but there were many more civil rights struggles to come. James Reese Europe died aged only 39, after being stabbed by a musician from his own band who suffered mental health problems. He became the first black person to be granted an official funeral in New York, and thousands came to mourn. Yeah. Jason Moran believes the music he produced allows African Americans to narrate a history which is in danger of vanishing. The way that African America has continued to evolve has also been without this notion or that you have a place, or that you have a statue, or that you have a body of work in a canon that continues. But I also think that when an audience will see these young musicians playing this music, that they'll be charged with what the future of it will be. <laughs>